guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to make learning medical terminology and anatomy more fun. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I will say this first. Uh, I am a medical coder, yes, but this video is really meant for any medical professional student, okay? If you are going into the medical profession or if you're in the medical profession already, in any capacity and learning medical terminology and anatomy is not really what you like. Uh, it is very overwhelming to you. Uh, this video is also for you. It's not just limited to medical coders. We all use the same medical terminology. We all <laughs> use the same abbreviations. So it's important to know that just because this is a medical coding channel does not mean that if you are in medical school or if you're studying to be a nurse or CNA, LVN, whatever, uh, that you can't watch this video as well and learn something. So hopefully this will help you out. So here we go. So the thing about learning medical terminology and even learning anatomy is like learning a brand new language. It all starts with, of course, your medical terminology. Medical terminology is made up of Latin and Greek words. And these words can get very similar sounding, but can mean two completely different things. So it is important, especially as a new student um, or even as a returning student, and you're just trying to brush up, that you take things one step at a time. When you start learning medical terminology, you always want to start off with learning your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words. If you can learn those, it's a great way to be able to piece together bigger words because trying to memorize a list of bigger words never helped anybody to learn medical terminology. All it did was scare off a bunch of people. So my biggest bit of advice when learning medical terminology is learn your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words first. There's plenty of websites de totally dedicated to this, and I'm gonna be leaving some of them in the description box of this video. So be sure to check those out, or you can always Google <laughs> these lists of common uh, uh, prefixes, suffixes, and root words, okay? So that's where you really wanna start. And then additionally, you want to get yourself a really good medical terminology workbook. Working through a medical terminology workbook and completing it from cover to cover, any anyone, because again, they are all going to talk about the same things, or relatively similar anyway. And so you want to just concentrate on getting one workbook that you can find that is digestible to you. You can go on Amazon and you can find tons and tons and tons there. And whether it is an older uh, medical terminology workbook or a newer medical terminology workbook, it does not matter, okay? The basics and the foundation are gonna be the same. So working through a whole workbook is gonna be a lot better than you trying to run around and, and say that you don't know medical terminology, that you hate it. This is the medical field, and you're gonna have to learn it whether you hate it or not. <laughs> and you will continue to learn it. It's not just a one-time get or done thing. This is gonna be a continual process when it comes to um, being in the medical field, whatever capacity that you are in. I have been a medical coder since 2008, and I'm still learning medical terminology. There are still terms that are, I have to remind myself, okay, what is this? <laughs> so I use my medical dictionary a lot. I also use Google, of course. Um, to help me out and the ones that I don't remember. And so there's a lot of repetition that has to happen uh, because the key to adult education is repetition. <laughs> a very wise doctor once said that. And so I never forgot her words when it came to that. And it's very true. The more we repeat things as adults, the more it's likely to stick. So concentrating on learning your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words first and working through a medical terminology workbook will lay that good foundation. And even though you may not be able to memorize these right away, there's going to be some that you're going to be able to recall. And so because of this, you know, that's going to help you to kind of build your confidence. I think what happens with a lot of medical coding students or, you know, anybody trying to learn medical terminology is that they get very frustrated right away when it comes to the learning process. And being patient with the learning process is almost like shouting into the wind now because we have things like Tiki Talk and we have these little quick, 
you know, everybody wants things in 15 seconds or less. This does not happen in 15 seconds or less. You will learn medical terminology, but it will take time. And you can't just keep saying, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. So if you know that obviously maybe sometimes you may resist the workbook, there are tons of channels on YouTube. YouTube is the Mecca. <laughs> Do you hear me? Mecca of medical terminology channels, anatomy channels. Um, some of my favorite, or at least one of my most favorite ones is Crash Course. Crash Course has everything. They have medical terminology videos. They have anatomy videos. They have pathophysiology videos. Wonderful channel. And you can learn so many things by just turning on that channel and just listening. They have everything in playlists. It is very organized. So for those of you who love organization, <laughs> they do uh, obviously have a really good system of how they catalog their videos. So it's a great thing to do. It also helped me when I took anatomy and medical terminology, just listening to their videos on repeat. And so the more exposure that you have to medical terms, the better off you'll be. Because do we, if outside of the medical industry, do you speak in medical terminology? No, you don't. So you're really kind of limited um, in the time that you have that exposure, unless you incorporate some of these fun things to kind of help you along. Because the more exposure you have to the language, the more you are gonna be able to pick it up faster. And things are gonna to start to make sense. And then you're gonna to start to figure out things without having to like, oh my gosh, what is this, what is this? It's gonna become more natural to you. So watching videos on Crash Course is a great, great start. There's also Ninja Nerd, I think is another channel, is really great for explaining uh, medical terminology and anatomy as well. So these are other resources that you can find. And even if you just go to the YouTube homepage and you put in medical terminology, you'll see a lot of videos pop up and the same thing with anatomy, okay? And it's really great to kind of have a break in between when it comes to how you're learning. A lot of people get frustrated just learning from books. And so they have to kind of change the way that they get this information in. And so watching videos is a nice way <laughs> to get that break in between. And sometimes listening to somebody else kind of helps. And then if you see things, sometimes people are visual learners. And so it is a lot easier when you are watching somebody or if you're seeing a picture on the screen and they're explaining it to you, it makes a lot more sense. When I was struggling <laughs> in the beginning with uh, knee surgeries as a same day surgery coder back in the day, uh, I, I struggled with knee surgeries and the meniscus and the ACL and all these things. And it wasn't until I said, okay, let me check out YouTube and see what they got there. And I started watching the surgeries. It made much more sense. So seeing it versus reading it is two different things. And having that deeper understanding does help. So again, that's me putting myself as a student into like, okay, this is the environment I got to be in. So doing that can help. And it is a fun way to kind of take a break from the book. And that way you can just sort of like have something different to look at. There's, of course, also watching uh, TV shows. Now, I personally like to watch House, uh, the show House. House was on for several seasons. And the basis of those shows were based on actual cases. So listening to the medical terminology that they use there, and of course, a lot of it is about the diagnosis and the condition and the procedures and things like that that they're doing, of course, with the drama mixed in. Um, but there's other shows, obviously, that are more into the drama, like Grey's Anatomy. That's not really what I would recommend if you're trying to, like, listen about medical terminology because Grey's is a little bit more <laughs> on the drama side. House is a little bit more on, like, okay, the conditions and the medical terminology and there's a lot of things that you can learn just by listening, okay? It's not, of course, a learning show, but it is going to give you that exposure to the language. And that's kind of what you need. Anytime you're trying to learn a new language, that's the best way to learn is to get around the natives. It's the same thing. Um, obviously, you can't walk around a hospital and just listen to doctors. So the next best thing is watching house, right? So that's what I would recommend as another way to kind of take a break from the books, but still kind of get that, you know, that 
that audio stimulus in as far as listening to the words and listening to the conditions and things like that. So that's just another thing that I recommend. Additionally, um, when you are learning, another great thing to have around you in your study space, okay, is posters. Posters about anatomy. You can find the poster packs uh, for anatomy on um, Amazon. There's a ton of them on Amazon. Um, and I do have my affiliate links. You don't have to click on the links. They're there. But I'm also telling you that you can go on Amazon yourself if you don't want to click on those links. It's totally okay. Um, if you look on those, if you look at the Amazon and you find those anatomy posters, there's like an 18 pack for like $24. And then you could just hang those up around in your study space. Now, you don't have to hang them all up at one time. But if you are like, say, for example, in part of your workbook, you are looking at the musculoskeletal section. So that's a poster you could hang up for a couple of weeks so that you can have it and look at it. Now, when you go to the doctor, anytime you go to the to your own doctor, you see all of the anatomy posters that they have in, in the doctor's office. I know they have them when I go to the doctor's office. Do you think that those are there for you? No, <laughs> not at all. It's for the doctor so that they can constantly have that stimulus around them so they can remember things. Because if you don't see it or it's out of your mind, it will be out of your mind. As adults, it's really easy to fall into that trap. But again, if you have it around you and you're looking at it on a daily basis, this can kind of help to like jog your memory, okay? And I also wanna point out another thing. In the medical coding manuals, we are able to take those into the testing room with us. In the anatomy, in the anatomy books, in the medical coding manuals, they do have the anatomy plates in the back. So it does have some of those things to kind of help you. If you look in the appendixes, most of the medical coding manuals have those anatomy plates in them. So it can help you to know that you still do have that reference in front of you. All right. So it's not about having to memorize everything. But it is about having to have that connection to, okay, I know where this is. I know what this is. And when we're talking about this type of word, it's, you know, it's, it's a muscle or it's, this is a tendon or this is, you know, whatever the case may be. This is an organ, anything. You're going to know those, those basics. And that's the, that's the whole beginning part. But a lot of you are just really getting into the nitty gritty. And you're trying to go down to the last detail. Guys. In the beginning, when you're learning medical terminology and anatomy, and especially when you're going over anatomy, you want to get the basics down. And then you can get down to the details later. But at least know what your muscles are. At least know your bones. At least know your organs and what they do. That's going to be your foundation. And that's going to be something that's more digestible for new students. And it will help you to be able to interpret this documentation when you're reading it. Uh, because we have to be able to interpret this documentation. Because no matter what they tell you, even though the doctor may select their own codes, these are the codes the doctor selected, these are the procedure codes the doctor selected, these are the codes that they want. If the documentation does not support those codes, the appropriate codes have to be selected instead or the provider needs to be queried if there's something that needs to be clarified. So again, understanding your medical terminology and your anatomy is a key part of that because you don't want to be the person that submits a query and it's really related to something very simple and because you didn't know your anatomy, you didn't know your medical terminology, you made yourself look like a fool. So you don't want that. <laughs> you want to be able to make sure that you know at least your basics before you start questioning anything, okay? And for those of you who have instructors who have said, because I get the comment all the time, oh, well, my instructor said I could just skip that and just learn the medical coding. You can't. If you don't know your medical terminology and your anatomy, the codes that you select are going to be wrong a lot of the times. Because again, it's about interpretation. And it's about you understanding what exactly are you looking at. Because some of these words are really similar and they sound like they could be the same thing. Or they sound like they could be in a certain body part area and they're actually not. The gastric nemus muscle comes to mind. <laughs> uh, so that's something that you have to be aware of. But again, if you're breaking down your studies into working through a workbook and surrounding yourself with pictures of anatomy 
and that will help you okay and breaking it down that way learning your um your skeletons right your 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 bones skeletons your bones <laughs> learning your bones learning your organs and learning your muscles and then you can go on and further into other details but at least getting those three down first that's really going to help you get your footing when it comes to learning medical terminology and anatomy it is not as scary as a lot of people are making it out to be and oftentimes it's just carving out a little bit of time making that effort to learn it that will really help you and it's going to go a long way into laying a good foundation for your career as well because being strong in anatomy and medical terminology is really really important in the in the medical field so that's something that you have to really work on and being consistent with it okay and even if you are doing some of these uh problems in your workbook and you're getting them wrong and you're like man am i ever going to learn this you will but you can't give up on it okay so being consistent again goes a long way i've talked about how much time i recommend for medical coding students or anybody that's studying uh, any amount of things <laughs> that they're trying to learn something 20 hours per week and you can make it work regardless of your schedule there's really no excuse because people will make time for the things that are important to them especially if this is something medical coding is something that you want to pursue okay so that's just something that you have to know the other thing is I'm leaving these links in the description box but there's a few new ones I have had some that I have left in the description box before like coloring books. So if you get those anatomy coloring books, connecting the brain and your body into an exercise, like working with a coloring book will help because I mean, having that action can really kind of keep it in your brain a lot longer than you just trying to flip through flashcards or do any of those things. Flashcards do help by the way. Uh, but actually connecting yourself and working through uh, a coloring book is a great way to number one relax number two to get your brain engaged with learning as well so I have that book um, in here it's the Netter's Anatomy coloring book I love that one there's also the adult cardiovascular coloring book now I specifically go for the cardiology one because the heart is something that is very complicated. <laughs> it is complicated and it is connected to so many different parts of our body. So it is very important to learn it. So don't let it be your nemesis. I was scared of the heart for a long time and I don't recommend that for anybody. So scared in that, man, it's so much, you gotta learn it. But I got books to help me learn. And I even went to the Goodwill. And you know, when you go into their book section, it's all the books that people have donated. So I got some really great cardiology books that I sat down with on the weekends and really looked at to like, kind of like, okay, get myself connected with this. And it has helped me tremendously. So I do recommend that as well, going to thrift stores or the Goodwill or something like that to kind of like look and see if they have anatomy books or anything related to anything that you know that you're struggling with. And I have found some pretty cool anatomy posters from there too. I'm just saying. So, but that's just another thing that you can do, the coloring workbooks. There's also crossword puzzle books. Uh, the one that I'm recommending, there's two. There's fun EMS uh, crossword puzzle book and the medical crossword puzzle book. So these are where you they give you the clue and then you fill in, you know, whatever the medical term is. I have actually made these and when I was in medical coding school, my mom was the one who actually made some crossword puzzles for me. And so now on my Patreon channel, I make them for my Patreons. I also do word searches as well, uh, which my mom did too. And so that helped me to learn. So I know if it helped me to learn, <laughs> that would be uh, good for other students to learn on as well. So that's just something that um, you don't have to join my Patreon, but my Patreon link is in the description box below. I think it's a great deal, but you know, <laughs> uh, but you can check it out if you like, but if you want to just order like books or whatever, again, the affiliate links are in the description box, or you can go to Amazon yourself and just um, search for those uh, medical terminology crossword books you know, to find those. And there's also the ultimate medical word search and medical terminology word search and anatomy word search. 
I did those as well. Um, I do have those links there. Um, but those are some really great books that you can use to kind of like, again, break it up and change up what you're doing. Because sometimes just doing a game or something fun can kind of help you that way too to kind of, okay, oh, we're, we're learning this. We're learning this. <laughs> and being consistent with that can really help. So can you imagine if you did a crossword puzzle book, if you did a word search book, and you did a medical terminology um, workbook, can you imagine if you did all those and worked through all those, how good your medical terminology would be? And then once you have that strong grasp, reading these op notes, reading these uh, encounter notes is not going to be so scary to you because you're going to understand immediately what you're looking at. And again, these things just take time. So you can't get impatient with the process because it is the shaping process. This, all of this learning and, and trying to learn this new language, it is a learning process. And you can't just think that you're going to get it overnight because you won't. And if you do, if you think you will, you're just setting yourself up for failure because obviously you're not going to be able to get it overnight. And then you're going to be like, you see, I knew I couldn't get it because you're not giving yourself the sufficient amount of time to be able to learn it. So that's just something that, again, you guys need to think about. And I had um, done a video the other night and uh, about study tips and somebody commented on there that they had been crying because they were learning anatomy and medical terminology and it's good the way that I broke it down to kind of help them to know how much time to spend and, and know how to learn it and things like that because somebody had commented before that about they didn't know how much time to spend their book has 12 chapters and they have between three and four months to complete this I said well you take the number of chapters you divide it by the amount of time that you want to spend on it and that's how much time you spend on it and so I recommended going the one week plus two days route, okay, to, to get through all of those um, chapters. And that would be a little over three months, almost four months to get through the whole thing. I think that's a good pace to be at. Uh, but again, if you are trying to race through, that's part of the problem because nothing sticks when you're trying to race through something. And especially when it comes to learning medical terminology and anatomy. Okay, so again, pacing yourself well can go a long way to you not wasting your time. There's a lot of people who are wasting their time because they're trying to just cram a bunch of things and learn a bunch of things all at once. And then you're gonna to try to learn medical coding on top of it? Oh no, <laughs> no ma'am, no sir, okay? That's not the way that it works, all right? Uh, but that's just something that you have to really think it through, guys. And it, again, just going those simple steps is going to go a long way. Being consistent goes a long way. Studying for a minimum of 30 minutes, a maximum of one hour goes a long way. Doing three and a half hours of study, breaking it up throughout your day and studying 17 and a half hours in five days, right? Because three and a half times five days is 17 and a half hours. And then you have two and a half hours on the weekend, on a Saturday or Sunday, and boom, you have all of your study in for the week. And being consistent like that, those 20 hours, that investment of time, that is going to be so much better. And you're going to be so much more confident because you have put that firm foundation in there. And it's all about building that discipline. Anything in the medical field requires discipline. Doctors, we don't want to talk about how much discipline they have to have all the hours they have to work and the fact that they have lives and people, uh, their people's lives in their hands is the same thing with nurses. We don't want to talk about how hard nurses work either. Or CNAs, LVNs, LPNs, um, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, how hard they have to work, all the things that they have to know. And we as medical coders, all of the interpretation that we have to be able to do accurately in order to capture all of the appropriate um, codes. For, in, um, for statistical purposes, for insurance purposes, and so that the doctor can get paid appropriately, that the patient is not paying over what they're supposed to or under what they're supposed to, and that everybody is getting their fair share of everything, okay? It's a tremendous amount of responsibility that we have. And again, building that discipline is so, so important. I've been talking about that a lot lately, about discipline, because discipline, you guys, 
it is so key to success because having a lackadaisical attitude when it comes to learning and not putting in the time, you're going to see the results. But then if you do put in the time and you are consistent and you are getting that routine in, that's going to make you a lot more successful down the road. I'm just saying. So with that said, um, I hope this video helps you. And again, just stay with it when you're studying medical terminology and anatomy. Be consistent with it. And even when you go on to your next subject, it doesn't hurt to continue to go through the word puzzle books, the crossword puzzle books or the word search books or listen to a show about anatomy or looking at the posters on a daily basis. It is the same thing from when we were children. We were learning how to read, right? And how the teacher had the, the numbers and the letters on the, you know, the border of the room. It is the same thing that we have to do as adults. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.